<laughs> when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my job right you should be watching me in black and white right now. But you will have seen uh, from the thumbnail, the title and if you've read any of it, the description. Today, I am doing a look with the Equalizer palette, volume 2, from Sample Beauty. So, if you want to find out, shh, if you want to find out exactly how well or otherwise this behaved, which colours I've chosen, what I'm going to witter on at you about, and where this delightful Christmas head piece came from, then my friend, as always, you do have the best seat in the house. I have said for some considerable time now, I am backed by Sammy the Sloth Straw. It is indeed that time which you need to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Cause here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. I will have shown you this in the intro. Um, there's actually two of these. There's a volume one and obviously this is the equaliser volume two. Same on the cardboard sleeve as it is on the cover. And this is what I like about Sample Beauty. The back is the same as well, so I don't need to keep hold of this to have all the ingredients. Little plastic condom thing. Usually end up throwing those away because unless I've got a very loose shade in the palette, nine times out of ten I end up when I'm either putting them back on or picking them up digging the corner of it into one of the shades which really bugs me. So, pretty sure you have all, oh by the way please excuse the visitor, I have no idea what's going on, it's like a couple of weeks before Christmas and my skin's like, hey I'm going to behave like I'm a teenager again. Probably stressed to be fair. Uh, so this is what it looks like, it's a notepad opening, so from the top really good quality mirror there which folds all the way back which is good to see and this is what she looks like on the inside now I have swatched like one two three four five six seven nine ten but these are actually in pairs so their names for example this is stripping down and then these two are tan o'clock. Same on the row below. Bottomless brunch for those two. Whispering angel for those two. And then the two that are in the middle there are bitter and sweet. So I'll, I'll put swatches up over here. But this is the palette. Now I actually preferred the first one but I saw Paulina use this and it looked really nice and then it went down like super cheap. It was down to about I think 13, 13.50 or 13.75 I think it was on Beauty Bay so I'm like yeah I'm having that and then a couple of days after I'd ordered this they put the volume one down to 13, 14 quid as well, so I've got that one as well. But this one being the more recent release of the two, I thought I would break my own rule and do this one before the colourful one. Um, as ever, this remains a teaching channel, so 
I will be going at a speed that hopefully everyone can keep up with partly because of my chronic pain and partly because I want beginners to be able to keep up with me um, I'll also be zooming right in so you can see exactly what's going on even if you're watching me on phone screen and don't have eyesight of a 20 year old um, what else do I need to tell you? Yeah, when I, where I'm zoomed in when I'm doing things like cleaning a brush or looking down to add more pigment or change brush or whatever because I'm zoomed in so tight you will see my lovely widow's peak hairline you're welcome uh, that's a small trade off though in terms of being able to see what's going on um, I'm going to insert a clip in just a second or two where I talk you through the difference between hooded and deep set eyes they are often mistaken for each other but the way you apply your makeup to get the best finish and the the most longevity from it is different and for the first time in months I've put pointy nails on the likelihood of me gouging myself at some point in this film very high very high indeed um, so and this, if you've noticed my little Christmassy headband, this was handmade for me by my friend Jean Pink Poodle 2. Bless her heart. She did this for me and she's done me some brooches and some hair clips and she's just she's just a really lovely woman. And she 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 felt inspired one day and just wanted to make me some things and she knows that I normally wear my little devil's horns so she thought she'd do me a festive one how lucky am I right love you Jean thank you much Lou uh, here's your hooded deep set eyes clip I will be seeing you at the other end of it to apply some coloured pigment to my eyelids the clip will be very up close and personal. You're welcome. <laughs> See you at the other end. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%, and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, 
I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, I'm going to start off with a fluffy brush. This is a Real Techniques 305 apparently. I'm showing you that and you just cannot see it. Oh, God. Right, which colour am I going to go in with? Oh, decisions, decisions. Um, I might start with bottomless, which is a kind of a, a mustardy yellow. Fair amount of kick up in the pan. Let's see if I can show you that. Doesn't worry me, just means that can pick the kick up up when I do either this eye or if I'm building colour up on this one. Right, we're going to be doing the Viennese Waltz of Blending, which is natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when we get there, and a reverse turn to come back out again. The reason I do this is twofold. One, I'm 46 years old, and the skin on my eyelids moves. Two, Lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. Skin on my eyelids, moves. And if I just do windscreen wiper, now that's when you get your lid folding over and you get those telltale stripes, tiger stripes, post, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Barcode striping. Oh, the fibro is real today, folks. <clears throat> um, but I know, you know, I say it's because of my age and everything and the fact that I've lost so much weight, but I know teenagers have always been slim that have similar problems. It can just be genetic. Um, and also, I find that the, the twirly whirly, the Viennese Waltz blend is much gentler on the skin of your lids than the windscreen wiper is. Hang on one second, I'm sitting on a nerve and my leg is going to go dead. Hopefully I'll remember to cut that bit out. Right, I'm going to start off about halfway between my natural crease and my brow. And I'm just going to start plopping some colour on basically. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? 
hope it has. If it hasn't, well then I sincerely hope that tomorrow is a better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day, darling, I hope it's as fabulous as you are. I um, spent four hours yesterday wrapping up presents and things that need to be posted out. Because today's the last 14th of December I'm filming this, so it's the last sort of guaranteed posting day before Christmas for, I think, for second class. I mean, I've sent everything first class, so hopefully you should absolutely definitely go there. Um, still got more stuff I need to wrap, but it was more important to make sure I got that stuff done and into the post today. It's really weird, it was super bright earlier to the point I had to put my sunglasses on because it was dazzling me. Now it's come over all dark again. Um, that blended out really nicely though. So I'm going to repeat the same thing this side. The reason I do both eyes at once, well not at once, but you know what I mean, is because your eyes are not symmetrical. And with fibre and everything I can find that you know, my lids can be puffier one day than another. And I sometimes find that even though I'm doing the same shape both sides, that I have to adjust one slightly. So that they look the same when I sit back and relax my brows and look forward. So you can see there, this one looks flat. This one looks like it has a curve. So I just need to bring this middle bit here up a fraction. Now if I put all the other colours on and already blended it, there's a good chance that I'd think, mm, something's not right but I can't work out what. Because once you've got all the other colours on, it, it can be difficult to, to spot where the incongruence lies, you know? So... I'm a daft mare. I've put my washcloth underneath the uh, Ujima Flip palette. That's the word I'm looking for. <sighs> I really shouldn't be filming today, but this film needs to go up tomorrow, so I have to film today. But yeah, fibro has just been kicking my ass the last few days, I'll be totally honest. Right, I'm going to dip into, I think, Whispering next, which is like a, like a pumpkin -y orange. It's not a brilliantly bright orange. It's got a bit, bit of autumnal duskiness to it, and I like that. And I'm going to take this a little bit further down the eye closer to the crease and just repeat what I did before take that right across same brush as before whatever the size of the head of the brush that's how far it will blend out or it can blend out so if you're struggling with lack of real estate here just start off with a smaller brush than I do. And you should find you'll be fine. And you can always take colour right up to the brow. Because I've got enough space I tend to leave it unless I'm doing an editorial look. But sometimes I get carried away and go right up to the brow. Just depends on my mood to be quite frank. Yeah, see, those are blending really nicely together. But then, you know, warm tone colours are not difficult to create. I'm going to go into some of those purples in a minute, so we'll see how good they are. Although, having said that, I have got three other sample beauty palettes. I've got the 
hydrographic one which is the blues and greens and I've got I can't think what their rainbow one's called but I've got their rainbow one that's you know, like a long one and I've got the what's it called it'll come to me or it might not who knows but it's another bigger palette of theirs. I don't normally go for big palettes, but there was something about these that just, you know, when I saw some of the shimmers that pa Paulina was using, I was just, ooh, that's really pretty. I need that in my life. I don't need it, obviously. I've got a way too many eyeshadow palettes. I'm never going to finish them all in my entire life, but the thing is though, I'm hoping next year to attempt another low buy. I attempted one last year, but it kind of got a bit scuppered by me buying stuff because of Brexit and everything, but um, because I thought the cut-off was going to be, what was it, the 31st of October last year, it was meant to have cut off. And then it got extended and extended and extended and extended and now the final cut-off is last day of the year. Um, so, um, you know, there's a, there's a couple of indie brands I want to try that are based in Europe that I know it's going to... You know, if I buy them this year, I won't pay any additional tax coming into the UK. But at the moment, because we are a bumbling buffoon of a Prime Minister, doesn't seem to know his arse from his elbow. Um, it looks like we're steaming towards a no deal, which is not good at all then we will end up with having to pay additional tariffs which I mean it'd be like buying from America I'll get hit with 20% tax when it comes into the country plus a handling fee so yeah deep joy so you know I want to try and limit my purchases next year so that I can afford to try the indie brands, you know. There's a couple of them that I've seen and I think, mm, yeah, I want to try those, but then something else crops up and I still haven't got around to buying them, so. Looks like it's going to be next year now. God help us. My friend Will came up with a brilliant description the other day. A man brushes his hair with a balloon. And just sums him up really. Not Will, the idiot we've got in number 10. Steam dogs are no deal. Which won't help anybody. Won't help UK businesses, won't help UK economy. Gonna be a bit of a nightmare all round, folks, really. Right. Now there were three purple mats that I can choose from. Bitter, cherry and on. Bitter, cherry, on. I think I'm going to deepen it up. I'm going to have to go with that one, aren't I? Now, when I do the next shade, and I'm going to be going for on. I'm going to be putting that through my natural crease. If you've had to move your crease, this is the point with this deepest shade that you now follow where you've moved it to. I will also be using a more tapered blending brush. I'm going to start with this one, just on the outer corner here, to do the outer corner and the outer third of the mobile lid but then I'm going to be using this one 
to take it through the majority of the crease because I don't want to cover up too much of that orange if I can help it. Uh, this is a Voldemort Fee 562 if you're wondering. It's clean, it's just stained. Right, so I'm going to dip into On. And as I said, in initially, I'm just going to concentrate that right on that outside corner. the doorbell. Have you got us one of those ring doorbells to make it easier for me? And it is a lot easier. You know, if I need to, if I'm in a lot of pain, I've been avoiding heading upstairs to lay down for a bit to ease my back off and everything in case the door goes. Whereas with that I can see who's at the door, tell them give me a minute, I'm coming downstairs, etc, etc. Right, so I've... It does look a tad patchy in the viewfinder, but in my mirror it looks absolutely fine. So I think it's one of those high-def camera reveals more than eyes do. Um, I do struggle here and the top here though with very very dry patches almost like eczema on both eyes so there could be an element of that affecting it too so I'm going to use now I've switched to the little brush and I'm doing the tiniest little circles that I possibly can minimize how high that comes up through there. You can see I'm doing a combination of windscreen wiper and Viennese waltz here. I'll just grab a little bit more and just see if I can Deepen this up just a fraction here. I don't know if you can hear those birds chirruping outside. I wonder if next door's got birds in their kitchen. You don't normally hear the birds that clearly. I know we've got some in our eaves. But they're out the front, not the back. I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. So again, same thing this side, just initially concentrating right on the edge there with the larger of the brushes to really smoke out the outer edge of the lid Just going to flick the edges up there just a tad. I will be tidying this outside edge up anyway. But I just. If I'm not going to put liner on, which I'm probably not today because my eyes are a little bit sensitive, I will normally do that. I will flick 
colour up on the edge like that because then when I tidy up with the micellar wipe and it a little bit you'll see how that sharpens it up and gives the effect of winged liner I mean you can see I think that that's gone on a lot smoother this side then it has the other side so I think it was just my particularly dry lid causing the problem there today see my problem is I'm so tempted by so many of the shimmers I want to use all of them and I only have a little bit of lead I'm ready to use them which is Bad frustrating to say the least but back in with the smaller brush again through the crease now with this eye when I'm doing the work on the lid the mobile lid here um, I've got super deep creasing here as you can see that was caused by my eye being pulled around when I was five years old at the ophthalmic hospital when they were trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly and um, even when I wet the shimmer because I wet every shimmer that I use it just helps minimize fallout because the first time I use a palette I don't use a glitter glue and I don't reapply concealer or do a cut crease on my lid because I want to see the opacity of the shimmers themselves I want to know whether they're topper shades or whether they're actually shimmers you know so with this eye I'll show you how to apply a shimmer properly with this eye, I do have to stretch my lid out, which is something I always tell you not to do. But the reason that I have to do it is that if I don't, what happens is rather than the shimmer blending onto the lid, the pigment builds up loosely in the creasing and uh, ends up cascading into my eye and down my face during the day which is painful and unsightly so yeah right i'm just going to rub my micellar pad it's literally just a pad with some micellar water on i'm going to use this to tidy up now the reason that i do this rather than use tape which I know a lot of people will use tape if they want to get this effect with the shadow rather than doing a, a liner the thing is if the tape is sticky enough to stop powder creeping under the edge of it then it's going to pull your skin when you take it off so you're going to be causing yourself damage and nobody wants that right let me grab a, a little brush this is a Voldemort Fee M149 I like this because it can get right down into that corner there without splaying too much onto the upper lid. Now, never go into pressed pigment with a wet brush. However, once I've applied the pigment to the brush, I will be wetting it. I'm using this one at the moment, which is Makeup Obsession Fit Fix. It's a fixing spray or a setting spray. Um, you can use any spray that you want. You can use a moisturising one like MAC or Mario Badescu. 
you can use a priming spray, setting spray, finishing spray. You can even just save an empty spray bottle and put fresh water in it each time you do your face. Just never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush because you will end up killing it. Okay. I am so torn by brunch. Look at that. Isn't that a glorious colour? But I don't know whether it's just going to be a topper shade. I also like sweet as well. I think that one is a topper shade. Angel is equally nice. That's the three that I've swatched. That was the first one, I think. Yeah, that was brunch. That was sweet, and that's angel. I think tipping it like that and looking at the depth of colour I think I might go in with brunch because it certainly looks to be the one that has the most base pigment hmm So, what palettes have you got your eye on at the moment? Are there any in particular that you're hoping will come into the January sales? Or that perhaps Father Christmas might bring you? Look at that. Pretty. Let um, me know in the comments. I'd be really interested. Right. This ferrule is now wet. So I'm going to tuck it into my knuckles and spin. Because the last thing we want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue that holds those bristles in. Otherwise, we're not going to have a brush, we're going to have a stick. So, let's start applying, shall we? Oh, that is pretty. Try that off and pick up a little bit more pigment. Does it apply better dry? Ah, oh, okay. This one actually applies better when you don't wet it. It's jolly interesting. And now, like I said, I'm going to have to stretch the other eye out, unfortunately. This is a very, very soft pigment. It's almost like a Super Shock shadow, if ever you've used one of those from Colourpop. Right, you can see I only pull the lid out as far as it takes to straighten out the creasing and as soon as I'm happy that I've got it coated I gently let go so I'm not pulling it out halfway up around the ear roll Yeah, as I was saying, what palettes are you wanting? Have you got anything you've got your eye on at the moment? Any Christmas releases? I'm not always fond of buying Christmas releases because... Unless it's an indie brand, because obviously... People like your old Too Faced and all that lot, which I don't use on my channel anyway. Um, they tended to put out a lower quality product 
when it came to the holiday range. Basically with Too Faced, if it's in a metal tin it'll be okay. If it's in cardboard, forget it. Now, which of the pretty purple shippers shall I use? Or shall I use a bronze one? Those two look so similar. Oh no, they are definitely very different. Okay. Decisions, decisions. Oh, that one. Sounds like hubby coming back in from the garden. I think I might go for that one there. Hey darling. Hello there, how are you? Yeah, I'm good baby, yeah? Yeah, not too bad. How's the garden going? Oh, it's going alright actually. I still can't believe we need bit. to mow in bloody December. Alright, I'm all for the compost heat. True. The thing is, the last mow is normally sort of beginning of November around here. We've got a river behind our house. Well, we've got 200 foot of garden, and then 200 foot of allotments, and then a railway line, and then a river, and then some woods the other okay. side of it. So I'll wait for Hubby to finish running the water so you can hear me. Sorry. Is that better? Thank you. There we go. It's very good at taking the hint sometimes. Um. <laughs> right, so I'm going to top which is the purple shimmer at the bottom, the deepest of the purple shimmers. Um, oh, sorry. There we go. Looks okay, Yeah, well, we've got the river behind us. We've got very fertile soil here. And most people, their last mow is October. We normally have to mow until at least the beginning of November. We're now, like I said, 14th of December. I'm still having to mow the blooming garden. But as Hubby has said, he has started a compost heap, of which he's very proud. Um, okay, this shimmer's a bit chunkier than the previous one. So I may try wetting it. See if it, okay, darling, see if it improves the texture. You've got much left to do out there. Oh, a few bits of blob. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you when I'm coming in. Alright, darling. See if I can find the bits that I have. I've had to put them in the drawer, haven't I? Hello. It's your toolbox. I've got some free handles. I relinquished control of the toolbox when we got married. There we go. Love you. Love you. I can't shut that door, can I? Not the extension need going out, you can't know. That's pretty. I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles just to sort of blend the two colours together there where they meet. I like that. Right, I'm just going to dry the brush off and then go back in. And again, this is this is it's almost like a cream to powder shadow. I don't know if you can see that texture. See? Um, it's weird. But then I noticed a lot of brands are doing this. Beauty Bay. Their book of magic was like this. Some of the shimmers that I used. And so was Mitchell's, made by Mitchell, the um, feet on the ground that I got. Uh, yeah, okay, so this purple one actually applies better when it's wet. Whereas the 
sort of yellowy, goldy, greeny, mustardy. Not entirely sure how many colours there are in it, but it's really pretty. And it's called brunch. Um, actually applies better dry. So, but then it's a learning curve with most palettes, to be fair. That's pretty. I like that. Right, my lovelies, I'm going to pause you and I'm going to go off screen, chuck some foundation on, do my brows, etc. And I will be back to finish off this eye look with you now. I'm going to have to wait a little while before I can chat with you again, but for you, it'll be absolutely instant. So, I'll see you now. Really? Hello. I am back and I decided that I was going to do normal coloured brows for once. Mainly, I had too many choices in the palette and couldn't decide and I'm losing daylight so I went for normal brows for once don't shoot me right flat top brush going back into On which is the deep purple that I used here okay. and I'm just gonna run that along the lower lash line where hubby's mowing <laughs> there is no way in hell I can put anything on my waterline because I get reacted from the tree and the grass pollen more than the flowers so hopefully this will be the last mow of the year. At least I hope it is. Chris is probably hoping there's gonna be more because he wants more stuff for his compost tape. <laughs> right, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, flat topped chunky, a little bit like me, uh, but it's brilliant for getting under your lashes and smudging out, but you can use any dense smudger brush really, it doesn't have to be this particular one, and I'm going to go into Comfort, which is a, a sort of dusky pink, Let's see there, it's not a, not a brilliant pink, I'm just going to use that just to buff along the lower lash line because who cares that it's December? I'm going to do a summer look or an autumn look or a. It doesn't have to be worn at any time of year look. Although I think the zombie's probably best kept for Halloween to be fair. But I'm one of these people who will use a spring palette in the winter and a winter palette in the summer. Just really buff that lower lash line out. I do like that. Now this is a cheap little lip brush that I bought from eBay over 10 years ago. And I'm going to go into Time, which is definitely a duochrome, if not a multi. I'm just going to pop that. There's a train. I'll pop that underneath the 
tail of my brow, like so. And then, do I want to use this or do I want to use a completely different colour on the inner eyelid? That's a very good question. I think I might go into Angel. Because obviously I am one. Fallen hells or otherwise, I'll leave you to debate for yourself. I'm just going to pop that. Oh, that's pretty. Onto the inner corner. And just bring it down slightly under the eye to blend in with that pink. This is like a. Um, like an apricot with a gold shift. I really like this. Hmm. Super pretty. Okay, my lovely ones, I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to choose a highlighter and uh, smother my face with it basically. Uh, mascara, lippy, do something with the hair, not quite sure what yet. Washed it last night, so as usual, can't do bugger all with it this morning. Or this afternoon as I suppose it is now. And uh, I'll be back with my finished look and my first thoughts on this palette so for you it's going to be instant so please don't go anywhere i am back mascara is the little mini clinique uh, high impact mascara that my friend hedda sent me the highlight is smashbox And it's called the Hood Witch. Look at that. Look at that packaging. <laughs> Soraya from 90s Love Child. She is totally responsible for me buying this. I blame her 100%. Uh, the Lippy is one of the Nicki Minaj MAC collabs. And it's Nicki's Nude. And I decided to keep... Jean's headdress on because I think it looks really cute. So, what do I think of the Equalizer palette? Volume 2. From what I've tried so far, I really like it. Um, obviously I was concentrating more in this kind of area. Um, I want to come down and try some of these browns with some pinks maybe. Um, see what the black's like as well. But I tried the colours that are the most difficult to create. Um, and the darkest shade that I used. Because dark colours are difficult to do. Because they have more pigment molecules as opposed to blending molecules like mica or talc. Um, and also purple is a very difficult colour to create anyway. So the fact that I went for the darkest colour being a purple, I'm really happy with how it blended. Um, the, sh the shimmer shades, this one applied better dry. This one applied better wet. This one and this one. I only used as spot things, so I, I don't know yet until I use them on the lid how they they best perform. But so far, every single shimmer that I've tried from here is that same cream to powder texture, so it's like a Super Shock shadow. Do not dig too hard in there with your brush; you will create a hole. I love the fact it's fifty percent matte, fifty percent shimmer. And I love the fact that they've taken some of the hard work out because by having a matte and a shimmer as a pair 
essentially you could do yourself a really quick look by just doing the matte shade through the crease, slowly blend it up, deepen it up with either a brown or a black or a purple depending on what shade you've gone for, team it with the matching shimmer on your lid, done. Really simple look. Um, and again, super easy for work. You could do a one and done look for work and then just chuck the shimmer on the lid, off you go out for the night, you know, when we can do that again. So, obviously I got this at a reduced price, so I'm super happy. Um, is it worth full price? Yeah, I think it is actually. If you haven't got these colours in your collection or you've got them but they're not that good and you're looking to get a slightly better formula, you wouldn't go far wrong by using this. I really like what I've used so far. So there we go. That is my review. Well, first impressions anyway on this palette. Um, let me know in the comments section whether you want to see another look with this one or whether you want me to use the bright equaliser volume one instead. If I remember I'll try and put a picture up of that somewhere. If I forget Google it, it's on Beauty Bay. It's... But yeah, I um I really like this. So let me know whether you want to do look number two with this. And if you do, which colours would you like me to use? Again, going one to five, six to ten. Which ones, which colours would you like to see me use if you want to see a look number two? Um, or would you prefer to see a more colourful look with a palette number one? Okay, okay. If you're one of my 4F babies, please double check. You are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you all and... They are leaving my films in your newsfeed, so it's not obvious that you have been unsubscribed. Rude. So rude. Uh, while you're checking that, it's also worth double checking your notifications. Not just for me, but for all the channels that you follow. Um, they seem to have stopped sending emails out at the moment. Um, and when they did that, all of my notifications got knocked back to personalised instead of all. So if at some stage they work out the bug in their system or whatever, or press the button to start sending emails again, you're not going to get them if yours have also been knocked back to personalised. So, you know, it's worth double checking that, as I said, not just for me, but for every um, channel that you follow. If, however, you are new here and you've tripped over me completely by accident in some other way, hi, hello, welcome, hope you enjoyed it here. It'd be absolutely awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest group of people on the internet. Super easy to do. Hit that red subscribe button and turn it grey. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube starts sending emails again soon. In the meantime, I have a huge uh, backside, yes, but I also have a huge back catalogue of films you can be catching up on. I've got more reviews, I've got makeup tutorials, I've got challenges, collabs, uh, tag films, I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So, that sounds like the kind of thing you might be interested in. As I've said now for what feels like forever, to be honest. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. Pick a playlist. And indulge. Spend a bit of me time listening to me waffle while I apply coloured pigments to my face. Makes my cup sound less interesting, doesn't it? 
Right, my lovelies, on that note, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.